Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. How's everybody? Yeah. You should be smashed. <laughs> yes. We've come to Joel's place. <laughs> Where we drink free. <laughs> it's, we have unlimited tab. <laughs> Glory. Woo! Thank you, Master. Oh, what people are missing. I'm telling you. They don't know. Because they're not willing to grow. 1 John chapter 2. <clears throat> Woohoo. Ah. Refresh, not refresh. <laughs> First John chapter 2, yes, in verse 15, please. You know, as the Holy Spirit brings us deeper and deeper in areas, <clears throat> we begin to find there's, a, there's multiple depths, even in some of the same scriptures. Amen. Because he's unlimited. And one of the things he loves us to do is bring us deeper and deeper to where we finally disappear. And, and in, in this area of going deeper, it says deep calls on to deep. And, and in that calling, God is trying to bring us to this place. Uh, such a wonderful refreshing and such a wonderful transparency where we actually become transparent. You know, when... It's, remember a song that we were singing, we've come to buy gold. And, and refined in fire. You know, when gold is refined, when it's really liquefied, it becomes transparent because of the heat. It's the fire of God that brings us transparency. That's why we ask for more fire. More fire. The word says that Jesus would come to baptize them in the Holy Spirit in fire. And fire, fire burns the impurities out. And it also brings us to a place of transparency where you and I are not looked at. He is looked at in you. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15, let's speak it together, please. <clears throat> what does it say? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the, father, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. <clears throat> he who does the will of God abides forever. That means there is an individual has put a focus to do the will of God by abiding in Christ. This is how he overcomes the world. Now, you know, we're so accustomed to just hearing about the world of the things that we see. But the world is something, it's actually a plane in itself. It is a, it's, it's a plane, the world is a plane of an existence, its own dimensional existence. It's with an atmosphere and an environment that feeds off the influence of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride. It's a, there is what it releases in this area attractions, amusements, perversion, self-survival, and all these things replace the relationship with the true creator. 
And what it replaces with the true creator also is false deities. Again, the world is a plane of existence with an atmosphere and environment that feeds off the influence of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. It actually releases toxins that cause people for, to, like, an attraction so that people go after and desire certain things that are displeasing to God. People get living on amusement. They'd like to be amused. It causes perversion and self-survival that replaces the relationship with the true creator. And it also replaces in the true creator false deities because there is demonic influence behind it all. So it's actually another plane of existence. The world itself is another plane of existence in itself. And John 16. <clears throat> you know, one day I had a, a vision. <clears throat> and I was actually in the... I, I, I wouldn't want to say heavenly, because it wasn't heavenly. I was above the earth. And I was floating way above the earth. I could see the whole earth round. So don't let anybody tell you the earth is flat, okay? What a bunch of garbage. And ding-dongs are getting caught up in it. Their bells are ringing in their head. Anyway. So in this, as I saw the earth being round and I was up, I, the Lord was, I was in a line of all of these angels. And the Lord was there, and he was making commandments and uh, uh, commands and angels where they were going out from this and going to the earth. And, and as I was floating there, I guess, I was waiting on a command. I didn't know what he wanted to do. And, and all of a sudden, he, he turned to me, and he, and he said to me, he said, one day all of this will be gone. And it was almost like he took a scroll that was kind of like the earth and all universe, and he rolled it up. And everything just began to disappear. And he was, as he was holding this, he said, like, one day, soon, I'm going to unroll all new, and you will be with me. And I was like, whoa. See, we have no idea what awaits me and you. We get so caught up in everything around us and survival and work and money and family and, and all the things that, you know, that so can cause us distraction. Amen? Where it, be it begins to replace, it becomes first instead of him. Think of all the opportunities that we've missed because we've allowed distractions to get in the way. How many times we've missed a powerful message from the Lord when it was so pertaining to us in the next move in our life that we missed it because we missed the message because of distraction. See, putting God first is always divine order. It's always divine order. Not putting family first. Not putting your job first. Not putting nothing else first. Putting God first is divine order. One of the things I said to the Lord, I don't want to miss what you're trying to tell me. I don't want to miss that opportunity. You know why? Because when we miss an opportunity that God is trying to tell us, we miss the opportunity that's coming. And many people miss opportunities because they miss what the message of the Lord is because that message is going to awaken us, alert us, and put us in position so we don't miss the next thing that he's trying to bring. Oh, hallelujah. John 16 and verse 25. <clears throat> 
Let's speak it together. These things I've spoken to you in figurative language, but the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. He was going to tell them plainly about the Father. He wasn't going to tell them about all kinds of other things that was coming, but he wanted to express the importance of relationship with the Father. Because in reality, he was the Father. <laughs> In verse 26, in that day you will ask in my name and I will, and, and, I, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. And again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Jesus said, I leave the world and go to the Father. In other words, <laughs> I'm leaving this plane of existence and I'm going back into a higher plane of existence where I came from. Why? Because he's abiding in him. Verse 29, and his disciples said to him, see now you are speaking plainly and using no figurative speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. But this we believe that you came forth from God. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has come that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you that... In me, you may have peace. In me, that means abide. In the world, you will have tribulation. Well, in another plane of existence, there is tribulation. But, he says, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. And, and you know what? Again, what, what, what's he trying to say? Jesus said, I, I leave the world, I leave this plane of existence because I abide in the Father, whereas there's, that's the only place of peace. He's expressing to them, you must abide in him. As he abides in the Father and the Father abides in him, we are to abide in him as he abides in us then. The world of chaos <laughs> cannot give you peace. Only through abiding in him, in the world of chaos, can you have peace peace, joy, and righteousness because he overcame and set the path for us to overcome. And that is by abiding in him. There's an area of abiding in him where we think differently, we speak differently, we live differently because we're no longer living according to the plane of existence here. We're living according to a higher plane of existence. In 1 John chapter 5, Overcoming the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 1, First John... Chapter 5 and verse 1. <clears throat> now we know that the word believe means to follow. It says, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Right? Now you got to remember something, that the Christ came from another dimensional realm, uh, an existence of a higher plane. Amen? Amen? So whoever believes that he, Jesus is the one that was sent from a higher existence who came into this temporary plane of existence and is willing to follow him is born of this other place of existence, not born of here anymore. That's where you are born again. You are not born again of this world. You are not born of the flesh. You're not born of the blood. You're not born of desire. You are born again by the spirit of the living God from another plane of existence no longer here. 
Oh, hallelujah. It says, whoever believes, whoever follows that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. So we are born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments, his commands, his requirements, his word. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Why? Because his commandments are associated with living according to a higher plane of existence, no longer here anymore. Is everybody okay? <laughs> are you ready? Verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. <laughs> and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith, our faith, our connection, our relationship. Amen? Our faith, our connection with Christ, our relationship, in following him, imitating him, and abiding in him. I'm going to say it again. In relationship of following him, imitating him, and abiding in him. In Luke 14, overcoming the world. In Luke 14, 26. And, and this is where he says, he said, read it with me. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, and children and brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. A disciple is one who lives in a higher plane of existence, from a higher plane of existence. What is he saying? Well, these are all of the world, isn't it? Mother, father, sister, brother, wives, all of these things are associated with the world. Is everybody? Ain't that something? Verse 27. <laughs> He's our husband. Verse 27. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Don't forget that, honey. <clears throat> and whoever does not bear his cross, bear his cross, that means pull the sword up and fight. And come after me, cannot be my disciple. He cannot live in that existence. The plane, that higher plane of existence just won't happen. Why? Because the powers of darkness will always prevent that person and keep him caught in the world, not breaking through to make that connection. Because, it, see, what does the word say? That the cares of the word, of the world, choke. Amen? Choke the seed. All the cares. People have so much cares about this place than they do where they really came from. And it chokes things. It prevents things. It, it, it delays things from happening. It's the I want a syndrome, you know? I, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> now, <clears throat> Hallelujah. Um, let's go a little further. For which of you intending, verse 28, to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him. Saying, this man began to build but was not able to finish. Or what king going out to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000, or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Everything that you and I have, own, or think of, anything that we have or associated with, if he says you're not willing to forsake it, you can't be his disciple. You cannot live 
the existence of a higher plane. It's impossible. You'll still be caught up in this realm. Or you'll say you love Jesus. You'll pray in tongues. You'll do all of these things. But you won't be in that plane. You'll live here and there'll be like a partial lifestyle. Does everybody understand that? It'll be like a partial lifestyle. It won't be the fullness of, because what does the Lord say? I want you to imitate me in character, in love, in forgiveness, in giving. Not in survival, but in surrender. <clears throat> Verse 34, salt is good, but if it, the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, of course, we know salt is associated with truth. Amen. The first thing about salt is it stings. Amen. <laughs> salt stings. Do you ever find salt on an open wound? It stings. It also preserves. <laughs> and it also makes you thirsty. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, let's go a little further. He who hates, so God's asking me and you to hate the world's way of existence. Has everybody got that? He's saying, I want you to hate the world's way of existence. Forsake the world's way of existence and live from another plane of existence. That's why he says in Romans 12, let's go there for a second. Overcoming the world. You must live in a higher plane of existence where Christ is. Or you will not overcome the world. The purpose of, I believe this message is to bring not only reality, but able to recognize certain things of our life. What are we setting our minds to? What are we setting our thoughts to? In Romans 12, 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world or to this plane of existence. Does everybody understand that? Do not be conformed to this plane of existence. But be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to the world of Service to darkness, lust, sin, selfishness, evilness, but be transformed by renewing or refreshing of your thoughts to live a higher plane of existence to overcome the world. Remember, remember we shared about in the, uh, our last meeting about refreshing your thoughts, constantly refreshing your thoughts. That's what it means renewing. Because if your thoughts are not being refreshed, they will look for somewhere else to be refreshed, and they usually run back to the world. That's what we talk with people's thoughts say, oh, I'm bored. Well, because their thoughts are not being refreshed. So they'll run to the world and get refreshed and not refreshed. Because by refreshing, we, boundaries are reset. Boundaries are always reset by refreshings. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. A, a disciple is one that lives from a higher plane of existence through thoughts, through his mind. The mind, your thoughts. It's as a man thinks, so he will be. That's where, that's where the battlefield is, isn't it? You know, we only use a speck of our brain. Just a very small portion of our brain. There was a, a child that was born. I was watching this on, I don't know, some station. And the child was born with no brain. It was so small, they could, it was, I mean, your brain is pretty big. But this child was born with such a, a speck of a brain. They couldn't, they figured, they told the parents, this kid's going to be a vegetable for the rest of his life. Well, they showed him at a year later. 
sitting in the high chair, eating and everything else, no problem. They were amazed. They couldn't understand how this kid could survive with such a small portion of his brain. Because as far as they were concerned, he didn't really have one. But that's the hand of God. It only takes a little bit for him to deal with. <laughs> that's all he needs is a little bit. That's why he only needs a little bit of our faith to change everything. Oh, hallelujah. In John 8, That's why he calls, in faith, the seed of a mustard, a mustard seed. That's pretty wimpy. He said, if you have that small of a seed, I can cause mountains to move. But people give up too easy. 831. The word says he already knows what you need, right? <laughs> Let's speak it. Then Jesus said to those Jews who followed him, believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Why? Because his word and his voice is going to cause me and you to live from a higher plane of existence. As long as we consistently refresh it because we're constantly losing it. Because this realm, this plane of existence, is constantly taking it. It's like a battery that the, light, the, the flashlight is put on and it stays on. If the batteries don't get replaced, the light goes dim. And if it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, you're not able to see. The next thing you know, your light's so dim that you're no longer living from a higher plane of existence. You're looking for fulfillment in this plane of existence. Is everybody okay? Verse 32. He says, and if you do abide in my words and my voice, and you're my disciples because you're living from a higher plane of existence, you shall know the truth because you're going to be practicing anyways. You're going to be living it, and that truth is going to keep you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and, how, and have never been in bondage to anyone. Boy, did they lie. How can you say you will, you will be made free? And Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed if there's that abiding. Amen? Abide in his words of speech, which are words from another plane of existence. The word of God is written from words from another plane of existence. You will be free from the world's plane of deception. If you continue to abide in the other words of another plane of existence. In Romans 8. You know, it's amazing when you, especially in, uh, in the Old Testament and some of the, like Ezekiel and Elijah and some of these powerful prophets of God. These guys were translated all over the place. They didn't need to hitchhike. Didn't need to, you know, call Uber. They, God just moved them from one place to another. And when he, when, when he didn't move them, he carried them. I mean, one step took them three miles. They just, because they were actually living from another plane of existence. The presence of God was so strong with them that their minds and thoughts were constantly on heavenly things 
and things of eternity and living from another plane of existence. This place meant nothing to them. Paul said, I desire to go home, but to be with the Lord because he was living from another plane of existence. But he said, I know it's better for me to be here and to rescue as many souls and, and hope that people will begin to imitate me as I imitate the Lord so it could be sent forth. And Romans 8, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. Now you got to remember that according to the flesh is according to the plane of existence here in this realm. But according to the spirit, which is another plane of existence, a higher plane of existence, isn't it? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement, of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh or according to the existence of this plane. Has everybody got it? Verse 5. For those who live according to the flesh set their thoughts on the things of the flesh, which is the temporary plane of existence. But those who live according to the Spirit set their thoughts according to the Spirit, on the Spirit. It's a higher plane of existence. For to be carnally minded, fleshly minded, worldly minded is what? Death. In other words, they can't overcome the world. The world is overcoming them. But to be spiritually minded, thought, is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, that carnal mind is what? Enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Wow. So those in Christ set their minds on the higher plane of existence. That is the power to choose. So you're constantly reloading your mind. You're refreshing your mind through the word of God. And as you're refreshing your mind through the voice of the spirit, he's resetting boundaries to protect you and prevent you from stepping over these boundaries and again living according to the existence of the temporary plane. Amen? Does everybody get this? Oh, hallelujah. Philippians 3. You know, when you think about how many things we could just say, ah, so what? <laughs> you know, whatever it may be. Oh, I lost my job. Ah, so what? God's got a plan. Oh, I lost this. Ah, so what? People, what does he say? Cast your cares upon me? Those are so what's. Because I care for you. But the enemy is going to come and try and devour you. Amen. He's going to try and keep your thoughts of guilt, condemnation, things you should have done, things you shouldn't have done, all those other things, keep you in the past. If he can keep you in the past, you cannot live from the future. And if you can't live from the future, you cannot live from a higher plane of existence. Oh, glory. Philippians 3, verse 12. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press, I, I press on. I press on. Hmm. that I may lay hold of that which is Christ. Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to apprehend it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead or actually above. I press toward the goal for the prize of the what? Upward call. Another plane of existence. 
of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this thought or this mind. And if in anything you think any otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Oh, he's doing that today. Nevertheless, to the decree that we've already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let us be of the what? Let us be what? Say, my old daddy desires us to think according to that way. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on what? Earthly things. They set their thoughts on a temporary plane of existence instead of a higher plane of existence. See, your thoughts are vital. How you think is how you are. And how you think is the enemy knows how you think. So he knows how to get to you because he knows your thoughts. Mm. Verse 20. For our citizenship, come on, read this with me. Our what? Citizenship is in, hello. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are a citizens from a higher plane of existence. You know, if everybody got this, we'd be different. Our citizenship is in the higher plane of existence. From which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. Forgetting those things, the ways of worldly living, resisting and resetting the boundaries of thoughts and desires that are from another plane of existence, the higher plane of existence. See, we're actually dual citizenships. We have a new citizenship. We are temporarily here, but the reason why we're still temporarily here is so many souls can be still saved. That's the purpose of it, to bring as many people home as possible. Amen? In 1 John chapter 4. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. But this you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the, spirit, in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which we have heard from, heard was coming, is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have what? Overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. That's why they don't want to hear you. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. Why? Because we speak from another plane of existence. Your language is different now. So that's why when people are talking to you, you say, Amen. I say, what? You may say, who told you that? Get behind me. They might not understand these things. I forgive you and bless you, even though you're a moron. See, they don't understand those things. They went, I remember somebody called me on the phone was trying to chew me out for something. And I said, I forgive you and I bless you. Yeah, that really ticked them off. I don't need your blessings or forgiveness. Oh, but you do. 
because cold's coming on you soon. <laughs> I'm blessing you and forgiving you because the Lord is my avenger. See, we think differently. Does everybody understand that? I know the Lord goes before us as a consuming fire. That's why when we pray, we're calling his words that are from another plane of existence to be released in this plane of existence. So it's working on our behalf. That's why the word is a light unto your path, isn't it? A lamp unto your feet. Because these words are words that he spoke that's been recorded. And these words are still flowing all over, maintaining everything. So when you speak them, they're just connecting with the words that have already been spoken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Okay. Let's see. Uh, okay, verse 6. Let's do that again. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of what? Truth and the spirit of error. Now, the spirit of error is the spirit of lie. It's a lying spirit. Amen? Again, they speak as of the world, but you and I don't speak that way no more. Ephesians 4. That's why something's going on in your life and somebody says, man, what are you going to do about this? Ah, the Lord's got it. I say, what? They don't get it. Amen. Ephesians 4, verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the world. <laughs> the Gentile walks in the fertility of their what? Mind of their thoughts. Having their understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. And you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man that lives according to the existence of this plane, amen, the temporary plane, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful what? Lusts which are of this realm. And be renewed, be refreshed, where? In the spirit of your mind or in the spirit of your thoughts. So everything can be refreshed and reset. And that you put on the what? The new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore putting away lying. Let each of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil nor give place to the devil why because he's trying to keep your thought pattern according to the existence of this plane that's why he attacks you with fear that's why he attacks you with deception lust of the eye lust of the flesh pride but his main thing is fear man if he can keep you in fear he will block you from living that existence of a higher plane Fear is a killer. We already talked about reasoning. Reasoning is just a friend of fear. That's why people reason, because they're in fear. Oh, hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. As a man thinks, so he is. So when the doctor tells you something, no, oh, I know what God says. I'm living from a higher plane of existence, not a temporary plane. 
The Lord still is. See, we want to give him the opportunity to have the last say. If you allowed the world to have the last say, then you've disconnected yourself from that realm of living. You allow God to have the last say. It's totally different. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Is everybody okay? Amen. Let's speak it. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind or your thoughts. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the plan of God, His grace, that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as what? Obedient. Obedient children. Not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in reverence, honor, and respect, which is fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, or aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Gird up your loins, your thoughts. Put, put That's why when he says, be dressed with the full armor of God, well, he's talking about putting on the helmet of salvation. Why that helmet of salvation is according to the thoughts of a higher plane of existence. You know, when the word says, he who is in Christ is a new creation, the only way that can become new is to live from the higher plane of existence. And that's by the renewing of your thoughts. Your thoughts will work for you or against you. And I'm going to close it at Ephesians 2. Verse 12. Ephesians 2, verse 12. Verse 12. Ephesians 2. That's why there's a difference between react and respond. React is according to delivering the existence of this plane. And when you react, you just open more to the enemy to keep you here, and that fight gets harder. But when you respond, you're responding because you're responding from a higher plane of existence. Verse 1, let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the other. So living according to the existence of this plane brings you to a place of a child of wrath. Hallelujah. Verse 4. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loves us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by his plan you've been saved. And look at this. And raised us up together and what? He made us. He made us. He placed me and you already in another higher existence. Does everybody got it? It's another plane of a higher existence. He placed us there. He made us sit together in heavenly places and where? In Christ. If you are abiding, if you're refreshing, that in the ages to come he might show the exist, exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, through your connection and relationship, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift from God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? Workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, 
which God prepared beforehand that we should walk and live in them. Overcoming the world takes living from a higher plane of existence through your thoughts. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that this impartation would be protected by the blood of Christ, that it would grow and bear fruit for your glory and take possession of every part of our being and our thoughts that we may see things through, hear things through, and grant us the wisdom and knowledge and understanding so that we can discern those things and live from a higher plane of existence through our thoughts in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay blessed.